Howdy. How many chapters will Deltarune have? This sounds like such a straightforward question, and yet it seems like all who quest for the answer inevitably get lost in an ever-winding mind maze of Toby's design. Why? How? Allow me to explain. The trouble starts with the Deltarune website. When the game was first announced, there was only one chapter and no chapter select, which made this website our only source of information on the matter. In the very first status update, outlining the game's development so far, it describes the progress towards completing chapters 2 and 3 plus, while cryptically warning us that these numbers can be somewhat deceptive. What smells like foreshadowing? Oh hey, look, it's chapter 2, which finally introduces a chapter select. And, is, is that 7 chapters? Holy Kunga Darrow, the plus in 3 plus is carrying 4 whole chapters on its back, what a champ. So, case closed, right? There will be 7 chapters and we can go home now, right? But then, why do the chapter icons go up to 9? I mean, 10. But I guess that it's not hard to just copy-paste the same blank sprite a few extra times. It's not like he has fully rendered and animated sprites of up. I'm sorry, is that a sprite for chapter 10? You bet your bacon I'm delaying the video to check on this. Okay. So you know how anytime you load up a chapter you've already beaten, it plays the Legend of Deltarune cutscene? Well after the cutscene is over, it displays the Deltarune logo, before whispering in a spooky voice. The game files call this the process logo, written in all caps, because, of course it is, but that's not why we are here. We're here because starting in chapter 2, the process logo also displays the chapter number, and unlike the other parts of the chapter select code, this one isn't just printing off text. Someone actually had to make individual sprites for each of the chapters, and then alter the code to choose a sprite based on the chapter you're playing. What's weird is, chapter 1's isn't actually used, because chapter 1 still uses the old script from before the update. And, is, is that, okay I'm gonna need us to hold that thought for later in the video, because I have one more bone to pick with this. It makes sense for Toby to have logos for chapters 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And I could even be persuaded to overlook chapters 8 and 9. But why is there a logo for chapter 10? That's the sort of thing you'd only do if you needed to make sure the animation works properly on two-digit logos. And if that's the case, that just opens a whole other can of worms. For one. Why does Toby keep describing his development towards chapters 3, 4, and 5, but not 6 and 7? Like, I know his plan is to work on 3, 4, and 5 simultaneously, but he doesn't even mention chapters 6 or 7 when he discusses pricing. Like, will buying 5 also buy his chapters 6 and 7? I'm sorry if he secretly answered this somewhere, but I can't find it anywhere on the Deltarune website, the newsletters, or the Steam page. They all just act as if chapter 5 will be the final chapter, and... Wait. Huh? Anyway, as far as I can tell, the chapter select menu is the only place where chapters 6 and 7 are even referenced. And, with the way this menu is framed, I wouldn't even be shocked if some future update gave us the ability to scroll down, which is very bewildering, given the many narrative hints implying the game will reach a conclusion somewhere around the 7th day in-game. But what's extra bewildering is the code for the chapter select. If you've seen Molly's video on the series' meta narrative, you may already know some of the game scripts are named in all caps, which has some very, very interesting implications. But what's even stranger is that when listing the chapters, there are eight entries, including chapter zero, which immediately causes my brain to succumb to the brain rot as I flash back to the gunner vessels and the voice crying out in the unused code. And can you really blame me? Video games nowadays have gotten so elaborate and meta about the chapter select menu, and Toby in particular already has all of this creepy lore established around the concept of unused or forgotten files and maps and even characters that it's almost impossible to look at this and not have flashbacks to games like Off, Doki Doki Literature Club, and Hotoful Boyfriend that weave the concepts of New Game Plus and plot relevant menu options into the world and story.
and this gets even more difficult to ignore when Toby and Itoki Hana release a music video about this very idea on the anniversary of Deltarune, while peppering it with imagery that heavily emphasizes the connections between these lost and corrupted characters and worlds. But I know talking about this makes me sound even more unhinged than the IC conspiracy, so instead, let's try to look at this more objectively, shall we? Examining the surrounding code with all of the code reading prowess of your average loaf of bread, which is to say, basically none. I do see that zero is the default value for the variables, highest uncompleted chapter and highest completed chapter, which seems to change the wording of this screen when the player first boots up the game, prompting them to beat chapter one first if they haven't already, while allowing the player to skip to chapter two if they so wish. The way this code works is by comparing the highest incomplete chapter to the highest complete chapter. So, when playing the game for the very first time, both values are zero. Then, when the player has started chapter one, but not finished it, the highest uncompleted chapter jumps up to one, while the highest complete remains zero. Then once it's complete, both values are one, prompting it to ask if you'd like to begin chapter two, at which point, highest uncompleted becomes two. And then, once chapter 2 is beaten, both values are 2, which prevents it from providing any further prompts before the chapter select. So the most likely answer here is just that Toby created a chapter 0 to make this part of the coding easier, since now he can set the code here to display whatever chapter was the highest completed without worrying about the fact that chapter 1 will be an edge case. However, there is one very strange thing about the number of chapters that has been brought to my attention recently, and depending on how you interpret this, this could change everything we know about the chapters, the narrative, and even the man behind the tree. Ready? If you dive into the game files and take a look at the music file names, you will find a song simply labeled W. which plays exactly once in chapter 1 when the mysterious voice from the opening tells us what her name is. We've already spoken about how the change in font, casing, and word choice seems to imply that this character right here might be a different person hijacking or otherwise interrupting the first narrator creating the goner vessel, presumably Gaster. And at the time, I figured this was an obvious calling card to Kara interrupting Gaster. Were that the case, I would assume W here is short for Wind. Since the song the game plays for us in the nothingness after Kara destroys the world is F Wind 2. So that would all check out. But when Chapter 2 released, we got another mysterious song, this time labeled simply D. This has had me stumped for months, because, why D? Normally, when there's a song like this in the soundtrack, Toby gives it a name like, Tense. Or Heartbeat. And he generally only saves one letter titles for songs that, have some obvious reason for it, like, Sound B, for Battle. But as of right now, W and D are the only songs like this in all of Deltarune. And, hang on. W, D. If this pattern continues, this will mean that each chapter will give us one update to the unused code that seems to be trying to engage us in some kind of dialogue with some poor goner trapped in the dark. And one new song that starts with a single letter. And if chapter 3 gives us G, I think we all know what's coming next. <laughs> But if this is true, this carries with it a few weird implications. First, let's count those letters again. W, D, G, A, S, T, E, R. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Wait, now we have a problem. R would be given to us whenever chapter 8 releases, which means there would need to be 8 chapters, or one chapter would have to give us two letters. But that would be pretty odd, although perhaps this could be considered evidence that chapter 0 will be used after all. Or, perhaps this is meant to be a hint about the gameplay of the ending. Already, there are a lot of little things suggesting the narrative of this game might require something of a restart or a return to the beginning of the game to fully complete. And you know what happens when you type the final letter of Gaster? It restarts. But this creates a very unsettling dilemma. All this time, we've assumed the man behind the tree is Gaster. 
After all, his song has a moderately convincing reference to Gaster's motif. He is described as a nameless, appearance-less man, who remains unnoticed by most, and vanishes immediately after discovery. And in particular, the spammed in ARG has Noel telling us a story about a white egg that unexplainably appears and then disappears in her game, and whose name seems to have somehow faded from her memory, almost like this name doesn't like to be stored or repeated. But this song, allegedly bearing his initials, is accessed by beginning the route that locks you off from the egg. So, this raises a really weird question that I never thought I'd have to ask myself. Is the weird root, aka the snow gray root, the gaster root? Or does such a concept even apply here? Like, don't get me wrong, if gaster is a parallel to flowey, I imagine he'll make significant appearances in both roots, but I think we can all agree that, in Undertale, the Jenner route is the route that flowey encourages us to take, since it's a mirror of the philosophy he has already adopted. So I guess what I'm asking here is, does gaster want us to do this? Does he want to see if we can break the boundaries of the game and reveal just how dark the story can get, a la darker yet darker? Or does he oppose this and see it as us contaminating his perfect little experiment by introducing new variables and conditions he never could have prepared for? On one hand, this song is tense and has a sort of evil vibe to it, like a choir of cultists chanting and urging us to proceed with what could be considered something of a sacrifice. But on the other hand, this is also the song that plays when Noelle starts to snap out of it. Just before this moment and she was quiet, entranced, and cooperative, to a point where she seemed almost eager to go along with what we were doing. Whereas when this song starts playing, she seems horrified, like she's starting to question this. And in that context, you could frame this as her waking up, and the song is something like a scared heartbeat, urging her to abandon this terrible path. Wait, now that I think about it, Wake is also the name of her action when you start the battle on this route, isn't it? And where did we hear that first song again? When Chris wakes up at the start of chapter 1. Dang, now I gotta do a deep dive on that, don't I? But, what do you all think? Could this be evidence for the reset theory? Is this the theme of waking or another motif for Gaster? And what even is Gaster, anyway? Let me know what you think down in the comments. And until next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Hyperlink Blocked.